What's up, what's up, what's up? You already know what it is. Another edition of the best podcast you never heard of. The Seated Nobody. It's episode 46. Uh, you already know who I am with Taurus, a.k.a. The last real nigga alive that's official. <laughs> Shout out to that nigga Nas. Now, I was, I was on some Nas quote shit today, man. That'll right? come out Friday. Well, that's probably what it was. Yeah. I felt it. I felt it. Pause. But look, we're about to have another fantastic show. We in here with my co-host. Sure. Oh. He takes it. Go ahead. It's I your boy Corey, aka Mr. Corey GQ Fresh. Oh shit. Uh Mr. over here fucking up right now, but your girl will make it better for me tonight. That was real clever. Yeah. We got our uh, guest here, <laughs> Sir Duke, man. You can see yeah. he out here. For the people who are gonna see this on video, you gotta see, man. He over here looking real flamboyant. He <laughs> hey, like, hey, flamboyant now. That, that's, cool. No, pr- about, Prince I'm, is like flamboyant and shit. I mean, say what now? <laughs> I said Prince is like flamboyant. I'm just And he's chilling. one of the greatest fucking, speaking of goats, he's one of the goats. Hey, he looking flamboyant in the most masculine way. No high heels. <laughs> yeah. No high heels. He over here looking like he calls shots and shit, have niggas murdered in the 30s. But well, look, we about to have a fantastic show, man. Um, like I said, Sir Doug, Corey, and Latouris. That's like that's like a lineup. And this yeah. monster and shit, he said in the middle looking fucking incredible. Like he fucking run the show. I feel like the assistant of all shit today. <laughs> but look, uh Doug, he run the icon live parties. Uh he hosted old school entertainment uh presents. We're gonna get more into that later, but just uh that is that the, the company you run? Yeah, old soul, yep. Yep. Okay. How old are you? Man, I'm thirty nine. Dang, I'll be 39 next week. I take this hat off. You see all this gray hair? I can't hide anymore. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Hey, that's what's up, man. You living up to that certain name. I ain't telling motherfuckers you either get old or die young. What's happening? Yeah. What's yeah. happening, though? Uh, what's been up with you, Corey? Shit, nah, same old, same old. Uh, what did I get into this weekend? I I went to uh, try to take my daughter to the high ass zoo, but luckily it rained on our way down there. Luckily. Yeah, <laughs> then we end up going to, she want to go to David Buster's, and I still dropped down her 50, so I don't know if the, it was better going to the zoo or going to David Buster's, but, you know, we hung out and shit. I um, think it was the upcharge. Yeah. Because of the festivities that was going ah, on yeah. this week. The weird shit going on downtown. Yeah. So how do you enjoy the parade? What parade? It's pride. What, what's pride? When you have fun with your con, <laughs> it's all fashionistas in that motherfucker. Uh, I bet it is. I don't fuck around with none of that down there. Hey, I, I went down there. I took a dime with me. Did you? Oh, you was trying to. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, oh, you don't fish there. Hey, no, no, no. I, 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 I said I took sand to the beach. I didn't uh, say. I didn't say. I I I went down there fishing. No, no, no. I'm not going to that beach for any reason. Yeah, me neither. Hey. What, so what's happening? Uh, what, what, what happened down there? Anybody um, die from a fucking deal or something? So. <laughs> <laughs> it, it actually, um, it, it felt like every other festival. You know what I'm saying? Like, it was just live performances. Um, you know, was, I mean. Was there any bearded ladies down there? No, nah, like, I wasn't no bearded there ladies. There, there, was, there was a couple of dudes down there in, um, like, you know, underwear. That's where, it's, that's where yes. it's not like any other festival. Yeah. Well, I don't know, man, because, you know, you go to most music festivals these days, there's there's a couple guys running around in the underwear, man. It's It's... it's but, but they probably got drunk and stripped down to their boxers. I'm pretty sure these guys went down there in panties to be seen. Yeah, well, it, well, you being shocked? You, I mean, we're in a climate where that's an acceptable yeah. culture, so it's hard to be shocked by something that you see so often that's uh, presented in the way that it is. But did you see anything down there that startles you? No, I, I mean, you know, a lot of a lot of the you know bands from indie were performing. So I mean, it, to me. You know, it just felt like a, another festival. Ah, okay. And I mean, maybe, you know, maybe like. So you just went to the music part. You didn't go to the other activities. No, like I didn't make it to the parade or anything like that. Uh, you know, I got the Prince Michael Jackson party coming up, so it made sense for me to be down there. You know, like. Yeah. It, that's that's p- perfect crowd that I need to pass out these flyers to. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah, it was a no brainer. So you was networking. Yeah, and I, t- oh. I, I took a dime with me. So okay. Just uh, yeah. let it know you're you not. Reiterate yeah. that shit. You reiterate that <laughs> That's cool. That's smooth. That's what you're supposed to do. Hey, I got a, I got a chick with me. You niggas I had somebody with me. <laughs> I was down there for that bullshit. I must ask for my listeners who view this. What did you wear there? Uh, I just wore like a uh, like a linen button up shirt and some shorts. You know what I'm saying? Like uh, any something I would wear to a you know regular barbecue. Uh, okay. Yeah. 
crazy. People people. always say this shit. They first of all, I hate the term of uh, homophobic. I hate I hate that term because it implies fear. It's like a reverse uh, psychology thought to make you feel fucked up about thinking they fucked up. Mm -hmm. So they tell you you're homophobic. I hate that term. Um, And they I hate when people say something like, "Why you think they want you just because they gay?" You know, because first of all, they're a (laughs) man. And we have an uh, inclination to go after what we like or at least flirt with what we like. Mm-hmm. So I, I I don't like to be around a crowd of gay men not saying some sort of dime or something, but I'll be thinking, I wonder if they trying to fuck me. You know what I'm saying? And that's an uncomfortable <laughs> feeling yeah. you should to Boy. feel. Because yeah. you know as you as a man, if you get around a crowd of women, how you react to your yeah. mama. You know what I'm saying? So it's yeah. not a foreign thought in your head to make you fucked up. You just know how men think. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's how come I'm on. Because we're naturally hunters, so. Hell yeah. Yeah. And it ain't like because they say they fucking legs, they put down their spear. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But I don't know, man. Did you get a lot of networking in down there? I mean, I just, I did what I did. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I worked the um, the festival, passing out flyers, man. Ate some food, you know. Got the hell out you of know? it. You know? I seen quite a bit of people down there I knew. You know what I'm no, I mean, you know. I knew you were the faggot. Hey, what's up, though? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, even even like staff down there, you know, bartenders, uh, okay. things like that. I mean, it's like any other festival. So you're gonna you're gonna see every you know you're gonna yeah, see everybody. They still people still gotta work it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, everybody's on the tour. So yeah, sure. it was there was. And Corey was that there. That's that was beautiful. That was the one. Of the course. I, I saw you right past on the bike when I was watching Fox Fifty Nine. Yeah, if we did see that. Listen, man, there was some dimes down there. I imagine I just, it was. I just, I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm just gonna go ahead and keep it one hundred. Yeah. Did you have aspirations to leave it too? Uh, nah, man. I mean, what I what I had with me was uh pretty pretty nice. Pretty nice. You can go to my Instagram. It's on there. I seen it. I trust you. It's nice. <laughs> I trust you. You got proof. Yeah. What well, you that's the thing. this weekend? That's uh, shit. Definitely not that shit. But now this is the part of, like, about business and stuff. People don't understand that when you uh, especially in some sort of music thing, because music is something that uh, something that just crosses everything: race, religion, uh, sexual orientation, mm-hmm. and things like that. So when you're trying to make that little money and stuff, you can't. It's hard to alienate people. You know what I'm saying? So. When you're doing business, that's what people don't understand. Though that you come across people from different lifestyles or whatever, so it's understandable to go down there and uh, at work if that's what you do. And I, mean, I, and I think another way to think about it is, you know, like now, you know, black expos kind of whatever. But you think about 20 years ago, you know, white folks were probably like, I ain't going downtown. I don't, you know, black people down there, you know, they tearing up, you know, and. Not that they ever particularly showed up at Black Expo, <laughs> but, showing up now. but I, I'm, I'm making the point that, you know, we all have our, like, natural stigmas and natural thoughts about how something's going to be. White people got thoughts about how our stuff is. We got thoughts about how we think gay people's stuff is going to be. And, you know, some of it, you know, usually stereotypes are based off of some truth. I mean, there's usually some truth in it. <coughs> but uh, I don't know. You know, I just hey, try to get this money. That was the, hey, you should have just left it and get money because you did that thing that liberals do. Where they, hold on, where they try to equate black shit oh, nah, with gay on, shit. Oh, no, come on, come on now. Nah, it's, it's, now you're stretching. No, 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 nah, no, 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 I was no. giving an example. No, no, and that example is what they do, though, where they say, remember, back in the day, the black folks, now the gay people, they can do the same well, type we, thing. We can, we can reverse it and say, we, let's, let's pick the Indy 500 as an example. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, we generally don't go to the Indy 500. In general, we consider that a white festival in Indianapolis. Yeah. But nowadays, I mean, if, I don't know if y'all have ever been, but Indy 500 be popping. Like, it'd be a lot of us there. They had that uh, thing with Courtney DJ or something. Yeah, it'd be a lot of us there. So, I mean, I, I wasn't trying to uh, equate our struggle to the gay struggle. Yeah. That's We don't yeah. we do not do that. Right, that, right. that, that ain't yeah. what it is, but yeah. Did you go to the 8500 this year? I, no, I didn't go to the 500. I went to uh, to Rev, which is like a big fundraiser before the actual race. And that's just like a big party, man. And you have been there before, though? Yeah. My yeah. thing with the 500, I just, I always tell people, it's probably like when I'm thinking NASCAR or IndyCar. Bunch of left turns. It's like it's something that's more fun to do than to watch. Mm-hmm. Like I, I nothing entertaining about watching cars going around the circle, but I can imagine as a driver, like how fun that is, you know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, I couldn't imagine watching golf. <laughs> uh, well, but, I, it's like I mean, baseball. It baseball, boring in a month to watch, but to play yeah. baseball, you know what I'm saying? It's yeah. it's entertaining. 
Baseball is going to get good during the playoffs right. yeah, if yeah, your team exactly. is in it. But I understand exactly what you're saying, though. And um, Like I said, we're going to get more into old school entertainment. Um, you got my, my favorite entertainer ever as far as uh, R&B and soul, funk, pop, rock, Prince. Thank Prince. He, I always tell people the only people, the only it's only one person who can uh, – who can um, compete with his catalog and his talent in music history? And, and who do you think that is? Stevie, Stevie Wonder. Wonder. Okay. Kind of the only person who close to him. Or what about Robert? No, I already said my two. Robert, <laughs> said, Robert who? Robert the Bandit, the Children Bandit. Kills. Yeah. The, the what grade you in? <laughs> that Robert. But um, no, I'm a huge fan of Prince, man. So we yeah. definitely gonna talk about that. Me, I ain't get into nothing this weekend. I um, I watch some incredible fights. Uh, I watch fights. Terrence Crawford. Crawford. I don't like how ESPN trying to finesse everybody. They we start putting fights that. on, talking about they free. Then next thing I know, you got to watch Terrence Crawford fight on ESPN Plus. I had never heard of ESPN Plus until Saturday, and I was glad that I can get a free trial. Yeah. So I laid on the floor. I had my computer hooked up to the TV, and I watched the Showtime fight uh-huh. through my uh my uh what's the core called? And I had my phone in my hand watching uh, 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 fight on ESPN. But it, that was the highlight of my weekend watching fights. Plus, hanging out with the uh, most beautiful girl in the world. Shout out to Destiny. She looked just like me. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like the better version of shit. But shout out to my baby. I, I hung out with her. We went to Danny's. Destiny being there. She only seven. She being there rushing people. You know what I'm saying? What's taking you so long uh-huh. and stuff? I, and I'll be trying not to be embarrassed and shit because she don't be trying to be funny. It's just how she talk. You know what I'm saying? It yeah. took me a long time. But, yeah, that was the highlight of my weekend, man. Uh, that's what's up, though. Well, um, man, I was going to say, I hope I'm trying to that fast. What we going to talk about, we're going to wrap up because we can't talk about the yeah. NBA Finals too long. Yeah. It wasn't female, that long. The female it's four games. That's what she said. <laughs> <laughs> the female demographics did not like sports. So I don't. But I must say this. Them niggas got swept. That's it. Moving along. Moving no, along. I, <laughs> I hate how grown men apologize for LeBron James. Niggas was sitting around he didn't have was angry. Like he didn't just put out your pacers. Y'all was mad talking about some he didn't have no help. Blah. LeBron James gave up saying he ain't had no help. He started comparing uh their starting five at the game three. Well they had Kevin. Kevin Durant, he has the uh, MVP. Steph Curry has the MVP. Draymond Green's one of the best defenders. Clayton gets forty points of the game. I said this nigga quit. <laughs> I think he quit after game one. Hey, that's I, what, I think they, uh, the whole team quit after game that's one. That's how come he's not my GOAT. I've never seen a GOAT quit. I've seen GOATs fight to the end, and I just can't jog with I mean, that. he still averaged 30, 10, and 9 now. He ain't just quit. I'm not going to numbers. This is, this is the NBA where numbers don't matter as much as they would have in the old days. That's how come you have people averaging triple doubles. That's how come you have Joe, uh, what's his name? The dude, the big center in, uh, Joe Kim Noah. No, hell, fuck no. He, was like, he should have played tennis like his daddy. Yeah, he should have. Uh, the dude in Denver, I can't remember his name. He the center. He uh, getting triple doubles. Everybody getting triple doubles. Yeah. So triple doubles have no, not mean nothing to me. Mm-hmm. I need to see you close the show. Uh, but he's a great player, man. That's all I can say. I ain't going for that goat shit. And then how people was trying to downplay Michael Jordan. To upsell him, talk about Corey in particular. Michael Jordan got put on the first round. He got swept in the first he got round. Got three times in the I first mean, round. How does that equate to getting swept in the finals? Hey, like, how does that, that equate? That means he never made it. He made it six times. Every time he got to the finals, he won. Who had a better team? We, I mean, we could we could push a narrative anyway. Who had better competition? LeBron. No, no he didn't. Who? No, did Jordan didn't. Be, Jordan was the favorite in all six of his finals. Because he's fucking Jordan. <laughs> okay, LeBron team has never been a, a favorite. That's because a fucking lie. What, what, when they, he got out there and choked against fucking the Dallas, they, won, they seven, won the favorite. They was to the fucking favorites. How you got Jordan? How you got LeBron, Bosh, Wade, and you're not the favorite against Dirk and the motherfucking Temptations? He <laughs> get out there and get 17 points a game, shoot 43% from the field. I'm not trying to so hear they this. So he been favored one time out of nine. You said none. So well, none. We, okay, Jordan we, been favored every time. I'm going to tell you like Jordan this. Jordan was the 73 every win team. Every year, LeBron went to the finals with that Miami team. They were the favorites. No, he wasn't. Yes, they were. No, he was. They yes, won they the they favorite were. against the Spurs. Yes, they were. No, he wasn't. We're we going to get off air and we're going to look yeah, it up. Yeah, and we can, we can do a gentleman bet and we can bet some push-ups on this. I'm not just sitting here talking with some shit I don't know. Nobody expect Tim Duncan to beat Miami that year. Nobody. But listen, my point is this. I am tired of growing ass being apologizing for LeBron James. LeBron James has a beautiful wife who does enough for that for him. 
We're gonna quit this shit. We're gonna quit taking it up from LeBron James like he's not a fucking multi-millionaire and shit and apologizing for him. And he a great player. I mean, he 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 the best of his generation. Where do you think he's going next year? Think he stays? I hope he don't go to the Lakers. That's all I say. Been, going, today they say him and KD might go to the Lakers, Lakers together. I mean, who? Him and KD might go. KD. Too. Yes. That I mean, I ain't, that's some shit you shouldn't repeat. You know, KD girl staying going. Yeah, he's staying going. I was like, why would he? He loved going. Stay. He ain't yeah. going. There. I can see him probably trying to go with Paul George, but yeah. LeBron James keep that uh, that goddamn K man game. Where the fuck is that? Yeah. Uh, we we need somebody who yeah. make people actually make people around them better yeah. instead of when they ain't doing good saying I ain't got no team. Because mm-hmm. he, I don't want no ball dominant power forward and shit who ain't got no back to the basket game like I was saying. Small forward. Keep it real. He a point guard. Small forward. He everything. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm, I'm, I just want you to keep it real before we move along. All hubris to the side. The LeBron James have a back to the basket guy. Yes, we just said this. Okay, okay. That's all we know. You know what I'm saying? He's <laughs> liar the truth's not in it. Uh, Damn. <laughs> okay, after I pointed that shit out, we watched that shit. We was like, well, I thought maybe, you know what I'm saying, you come around with some little honesty. But you didn't. Say but he do. No, okay. All okay. right. Okay. Since we have a music guest, let's get into music. What's that? Uh, Lil Wayne finally finally got to make it to the north. He's at the south. <laughs> he ain't a slave no more. He got uh, got his walking papers. He uh, had a lawsuit for a hundred million dollars total against what well, fifty four million gets cash money, forty million gets Universal Music Group, and so they settled. So Universal Music Group paid off. Part of his debt from Birdman, they said it's anywhere from like twelve to sixteen million, and he's officially off cash money, and the quarter five is gonna be released through Universal only, so he ain't got no more dealings as far as an artist with cash money, but they're still Young Money where they both own fifty fifty, so that's all. But I guess the fans don't get Carter Five. Like, do you think? Like, are you still waiting for the quarter five? I didn't wait for no cars. The last car that I cared about, they no fucked it two. up. That's the only car oh, I ever cared about. And I kind of have a soft spot in my heart for blue car. But outside of that, <laughs> I have no fucking... I am not... You said he just left the South and he... He a free man he, now. He has to realize there's still segregation in the North. No, <laughs> one, is, no one is waiting on a Lil Wayne album. This is not 2007. People were The block is not hot. Like, oh, man. It's just like what they felt like they had to do. It's the yeah. custom of everything. He fought a long battle. But we've actually, I it's kind of like I forgot OJ was getting out of jail. Uh, I man. forgot Lil Wayne was locked up. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I mean, Lil Wayne had a good run, man. I think he got one more opportunity to have a great album. Uh, I'm sure he got a lot of shit to talk about. People are very interested in knowing about why exactly did he keep having seizures. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's some shit that he yeah, needs to... We know the we, answer to that. Yeah, drugs. We want to hear from his mouth. Yeah. And we want to hear Ricky Ross on the motherfucking hook. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But How you feel about that? I mean, I, I, I agree. I don't think anybody's checking for... At least anybody in our age is checking for Lil Wayne's album. Now, what I will say is that um, Wayne has had the unique, unique ability of... This is going to sound like a weird comparison, but... Think about somebody like Snoop. Like Snoop can go to any city and sell out. It doesn't. It's like sell out a concert. It doesn't really matter how hot the music is, what's out right now. They have gotten to that iconic status to where people just love them. Mm. So we not checking for his album, but that shit still gonna go double platinum. The the young all the young go double platinum. Well, platinum. The young people are gonna buy. Well, okay. Let me take it that might. back. They might. Let me, let me yeah, take it might go platinum. Yeah, yeah. I take that back. Right. I mean, cause yeah. you, you just. I mean, the only way I can say is we got young dick riders. You know what I'm saying? And when you ain't got nothing else to dick ride besides Migos. Wayne, I mean, like Wayne, Wayne, like the god to the young, all yeah. the younger dudes right but now. But the younger dudes, older dudes now. Yeah. Like I'm, t- I'm talking about like. You know how we like Tupac was yeah. to y'all, but it's down to us. So he like, damn, damn. Ah, uh, yeah, 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 I'm not part of the demographic. Exactly. Yeah, to understand that's that. what I'm saying. So, like yeah. I'm thinking that's Drake for y'all. <laughs> yeah, I, I, he's I, like our Jay Z there. No, yeah. No, no, uh, Drake is like they Jay Z and Wayne like they Tupac. Exactly. Don't ever. Not for us. Not for us. This is the lean movement we talking about. Future, future, they Jay Z or something. We need a little. We need somebody just a little bit rougher. Future is there. Who, who Kanye? Future, future could be that Kanye. Exactly. Singing and shit. 
Yeah. Man, listen, right, man. with the Lil Wayne thing, uh, I disagree with the Snoop thing. Because Snoop is a, one of the few artists who transcend music. Like, we don't remember the last great album Snoop had. But Snoop is very, he's doing yeah, shows with Martha Stewart. And Snoop had a personality. And he got the Joker as well. Like, he got he, Snoop do a lot of stuff. He's been in movies, you know what I'm saying? I'm saying, comical I'm saying even, be, even before those moves, even before those moves, I'm talking 10, 15 years ago, Snoop ain't made good music in a long time. Long time. I mean, when's the last time you checked for a Snoop album? It was the when he had the block is hot. You know, I mean, it's, been, be it's been quite a while. Ooh. But he can show up in Madison Square Garden and probably sell it out. And that's what I'm saying, the yeah. uniqueness of Snoop. I don't think Lil Wayne has that drawing power. I don't think uh, people yeah. go crazy. I, I think I think the younger generation, he does have it. I think somebody got to be on the bill with him. I'm, I'm going to tell y'all like, something real quick. We went to a club in Miami. We paid $90 for right. tickets just because Lil Wayne was going to be there. And he wasn't even performing just because he was going to be there. You should never make that shit. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like you just admitted yeah. that on the air. You know, you know, it's like my girl like, and had me go there. The yeah. 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 I was forced to pay $90. Yeah. yeah. Shout out to my boy Javar. I was superstar. Yeah, but, uh, Fight the 23rd. He knocks niggas out. Go ahead. Nice. But yeah, like, you got to understand, like, if y'all... For Jay Z, if Jay say Jay Z was gonna show, and I'm not even saying it like, dang, I love Lil Wayne, cause I'm a little ahead of my time, honestly. But I'm, I can, I'm able to come back and see how my peers look at a lot of things. Uh-huh. You know what I mean? So I went, cause everybody else going. You know what I mean? So right. I, I, fuck it. You know what I mean? This motherfucker about to be popping, but just cause Lil Wayne went, so he still got in our generation. He still got that fan base. Right? When was this? Right, this was March. For real. Yep. Uh, so, yeah, he might. So that killed my argument just a little bit, but I still got to see the album sales. Yeah. And plus, like, the thing with, He's with, Snoop, well. with Snoop, what was the demographics of the people in that bar? Uh, talking about ages? The age, uh, 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 race. Yeah, it was, I'm going to say it was about 50 50. Yeah, it was Couple, there, uh, couple Hispanics. whites and Hispanics, a lot yeah. of Hispanics, a, lot of Hispanics. a whole lot of Hispanics. Where's you at? Black. I was in club. Well, you was in Miami. Yeah, I was yeah. in Miami. I was in uh, live. I was in live. Now yeah. just think about this with Snoop right yeah. here. Snoop will have fifteen year olds who've never heard Gin and Juice hollering Snoop. They like Snoop because they've seen his out. They've seen him on TV. They see his Instagram. They've seen the Watch ba- uh, Baby Boy, and he'll also have sixty year olds. You know what I'm saying? Who's trying to stay cool and stay relevant? Snoop a transcends. Lot, a lot of people yeah, might yeah, 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 yeah. But the, but the uh, capitalize on what you're saying about Snoop, a lot of people, a lot of young dudes start uh, listening to Snoop because, you know, he still just did collab with Dave East. Yeah. You yeah. know, so I ain't know it, it just kind of brought, you know, yeah. people went kind of went back and started listening to Snoop a little bit too. And know? like I understand because. And he spoke weed, so he probably. Lil Wayne had that rock star coming. roar about him. You know what I'm saying? He had that rock star. That's the type shit about him so I can understand saying that he has that kind of reach but I just I think just comparing it to Snoop is kind of because Snoop he ain't like down there league of his own yeah and when we talk about Snoop he, he just he transcended a lot of things and like we said because he hasn't had relevant music in so long but he stayed relevant to where you can look at hip-hop uh, artists who had consistent uh great music but they not relevant mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying so Snoop he, he's one of uh a rare case in that sense. Yeah. But I'll listen to, like, I've never, like, listened to a Lil Wayne CD to hear Lil Wayne. I've hey, listened the to it like, production. Like, on the Carter 4, my favorite shit is the, <laughs> the intro and outro. Ah, yeah. They're my favorite songs. Like, and I think, the song with uh, Jada kissing them. I, I don't even know what she's talking about. I think it's right before the outro. I probably heard it. I, yeah, I don't want to like, said like, shot at Jay. Now. He was like, get that, can I get that how much you love your lady money? Yeah, and yeah. I mean, and it might be because of my age, like things like that. Like, shut up, little boy. Hey, you know, they start with Lil. Yeah. How are you going out here threatening people? You was actually, and then I don't understand. This is why I knew the climate in the world was changing when they had him with little baby kissing in the mouth, oh, and man. nobody was upset. Nah, pe- people had stuff to say. But it, I'm just saying, though, in the '90s, that would have destroyed a career. When we came yeah. to music, the 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 most gay shit, and I hate to say this, but this is. Yo, shout out to your birthday, June 16th. When Tupac was in that tub with all that jewelry on, man, that wasn't the most masculine picture <laughs> I've ever seen in my fucking life. But 
he was a person who <laughs> niggas yeah. would niggas would hop in the tub be like I'm like Tupac, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Throw that little jewelry on, but like that little Wayne stuff, man. But it ain't just little Wayne. It's the climate of rap now where it wasn't, a, and that's just how music changed, music evolved, or whatever and stuff. So I'm being that old man right there when I'm talking yeah, about what well, wouldn't have happened back yeah. in the day. But uh, shout out to Lil Wayne. It's Part cool. of three was nice. What was it? Part what was the best song on there? Uh, I, I thought the album was, was, was pretty bloody. Uh, I mean, I'm asking what's the best. I don't the, know the best. The best song is the one about uh, New Orleans. Lollipop. Ah, yeah, like, and six like foot. a Billy. Is that shit that that's on four. Carter four. four. A Millie was on Carter three. Oh, a Millie, a Millie. That's the best song that's on there. A Millie, I'm tripping. Yeah. I like them songs because they was good songs, but when it breaks tie down, my hands I'm is probably my favorite. I'm always the lyrics. I'm a glutton for great lyrics. I top you like tie my hands then. Yeah, Millie, he wasn't saying that. That's why I said. That's I'm like, like, in there, I'm in there. like, it was just some, and it was a great song, great sample, good production. I mean, and it was some catchy shit, but what what I didn't like Lil Wayne was on the Carter too. Like, I listened, like, I, it was one of the Carter where he tried to sound like Jay-Z the whole time. Carter 2. That's, 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 that's the one I actually like. That's why I love the Carter That's the one I actually like. That's the one I actually like. But now you yeah. see why Hustlers he did like yes. yes. hey, Hustler's like music. Hey, Hustler's is probably my favorite song. Um, Which one? On Carter 2, Hustle Music and um, the, the Fly In. I like Lil Wayne shit with Cannon. What's that shit that? Cannon. What was that shit he had? Dedication. That part of the dedication. I like that shit now. Yeah. I like that shit. His mixtapes are pretty decent. Yeah. I just like his mixtapes and shit. But drought. The cannon was a drought, I think. When, it was, it was a dedication. particular song when I can't yeah. remember. But what, um, when is he, does he have a release date? Nah, he just, uh, they say he's supposed to do like an interview or some shit, but I guess breaking it all down. Uh, when the Carter Five dropping. Yeah, I must say, he does give the most funny interview. He does. He, uh, now, I, now I'll sit there and wonder what the fuck he gonna say next. Uh, what did he say? Uh, they I'm a grown him. ass blood. Remember they had a son? And his answer was, I don't care about that. I'm a grown ass blood. That's, That's actually what? something about his daughter. Like, what if your daughter was to listen to something? It was a Lil Wayne R, um, interview, man. He was shitty. Man, man, man. He had a hood on. Yep, that yep. That's you know what? No, 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 no. This is what I like. His disposition. Yeah. When he was in fucking court, that was my uh, shit. Oh my <laughs> hey, it was just like, I think it was a, like a, mon- like a monetary issue. I don't yeah. think it was criminal, but boy. No, it, it was the whole New York shit. No, but this ain't going to do that, did he? I'm sure he did, but this ain't what I'm talking about. Uh-huh. It's one he was talking about. He, uh, he was in there like, <laughs> I was like, oh, I don't give a fuck. I said, that's a lot of money. I don't give a fuck. Uh, I'll be in court sitting on the street doing a yeah. motherfucker. <laughs> Uh, I'll say yes. I won't put the sir on there. Yeah, yeah, just yeah. for my ancestors, yeah, I won't yeah. say the sir. Because he's going to do what he's going to do. But that, that shit right there, I like this. Was it the lawsuit deposition? I think that's what it was. Yeah, because that lawsuit was like 2006 or some shit when he first sued. Cash, damn. I forgot about uh, that he had went to prison, man. Yep. The, the it's crazy, shit. you know, how um, when he went to prison how he got bigger no he um, drake got big oh yeah drake how got when big. your idols turn into your rivals you know what yeah. i'm saying i mean it's not quite the same thing though but when he uh when he just i mean drake seemed like he he was on a trajectory to go to, go to the level yeah. anyway though but it seemed like when you become you know what i'm saying in charge your parents go to work you do what the fuck you want to do in the house. Uh, he, he did a lot of shit, man. Yeah. But I like that shit, though, man. He, uh, it was cool, but uh, what else we got on tap? Anything uh, else? Now it's coming out cool. Friday. Yeah, now it's coming out Friday. This is a Kanye West produced track. Uh, yeah, Kanye produced all seven songs. Damn, seven? What the fuck? Is this some goddamn occult numerology shit he going on? He said something about <laughs> lucky shit or seven. something. Everybody got seven. Said then next week's Tiana Taylor and seven songs. Listen, you can keep your Tiana Taylor shit to yourself. I kind of I, I like Tiana Taylor. Taylor. I got that, um, damn, it's on uh, seven. Um, she got the song Bliss with John Legend that was on the, uh, the Crew Summer. Uh, maybe the song featured Yo Gotti and uh, Pusha T. She got a, uh, a tell me on it. That uh, seven, that's crazy. The name of her song album was seven or whatever it was. 
Like, it's actually, as far as music-wise, was a, a actually good CD. To say you like Keanu Taylor, the next thing I thought you were going to say was that Mom Sean was my favorite basketball player. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, I ain't never said for Keanu Taylor, man. I mean, she takes fantastic pictures. She does. She, she's talented. She does. Like, music, musically, she's, I mean, done wrote for some Has people. She? Yeah, she wrote, she wrote for Beyonce. She wrote on that, um... Uh, that 444, I think they said she wrote on it. Yeah, I remember she was on Sweet 16. She was on Sweet 16. She was on Sweet 16. <laughs> I don't even see that shit. Yeah, yeah. man. That she, was came, she was signed to uh, Star Trek then yeah. at 16. Signed with Pharrell. For real. Yeah, that's how she started out. Uh, she one of those girls, though, that, that she do so much moving around and shit that you really get to really focus on her face. And when you do, you're kind of disappointed. Uh, yeah, I, I think I'd have to agree with you on that. Yeah, she's uh, definitely like a pit bull with the face. So. Hey, it's a cute pit bull, though. Nonetheless, I, mean, I, don't think, I don't think any of us would deny her if she walked through the door right now. I know. Uh, yeah, I definitely not cry if she walked through the door. But, um, oh, he'll just talk about me like I'm a whore. <laughs> <laughs> he'll, he'll go. He'll go. <laughs> hey, speaking of, first off, I'm excited about the Nas album. I seen that goofy ass picture we was talking about uh, Saturday. Which one? The one where they, uh, Jay and Beyonce was landing yeah. in the bed. Oh, man. First, we're going to segue to that real quick. Yeah. But first, I'm excited about the Nas. I want to see how you going to say on some uh, Kanye production. Um, the question is, is, is it gonna be some, some new age Kanye production? Or is it gonna be that Kanye production we, we, what, we grew to what, love? Album? Would you say, when you say when we grew to love, we fell in love with Kanye production with the uh, samples. Blueprints, yeah, yeah Blueprint. samples. Yeah. Is that like, would you wanna hear Niles on that? I would. Yeah. I, Not I mean, are, are, we gonna, are we gonna get the, the dark twisted fantasy Kanye? Are we gonna get the Yeezus? I mean, what? What we gonna get if Nas is rapping over Yeezus? I mean, it it it'll it might it might it might be cool for one listen, but you ain't gonna roll through it in the car. I think that Nas uh, Nas do better on fast be- fast paced beats to me. Uh, think hip hop is dead, things that. like that. Black and I'm not James. talking like Eminem fast, but no, but I could yeah, I see what you're saying. Like I love I love I like Nas on slow shit and fast shit. I don't like when he do it on like. Off beat beats, and I think about I'm thinking that zone out from God's and that zone, 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 zone now, zone, zone. Like I don't like him on that, and he said that he tries to pick beats that normal people wouldn't do, just to showcase his talent. But when you have a chance to do an album with Kanye West, man, I'm expecting something phenomenal. Yeah. I want to hear something that's incredible, and I was one of the rappers who I was thinking about when I said that. He's a better artist than Snoop, but Snoop is way more relevant. Nas walked through Greenwood Mall and shit, he get like 10 people walk up to him. Right. Snoop go through there, they shut them all down. Yeah. And Nas is a more talented artist. You know what I'm saying? But that's just how it is for our personalities or whatever. So I'm excited about the Nas. Uh, your thoughts on the picture, Corey? I, I thought that shit looked goofy as hell. Like, it's not a picture I would have took. With Beyonce? I took it with Beyonce, but okay, if, I had, did. if I had a girl, but Beyonce is <laughs> not my girl. So. so you think your girl ain't up to Beyonce standards, so that's why you I don't have do a it. girl, but I'm just saying. Know, hypothetically. Uh, I just want to take that picture. Hey, hey, you said if it was Beyonce, you would have took it. No, I just want to take that picture. You said it was Beyonce. It was my bitch, I'll take the picture. Well, my question. I'm not going to put Beyonce over my bitch. Yeah, but I'm not taking the picture if it's my bitch or if it's Beyonce. I'm not taking not that Not now, picture. nigga. Two, 30 seconds ago. No, I said I'm not ta- I came back and I'm not taking a picture. <laughs> Did you say he'd take this shit with no, Beyonce? No, I said I'm not taking that picture. Oh, why, he said, why, you taking a picture with Beyonce? <laughs> I will take a picture with Beyonce. <laughs> this is I'm two, not taking that picture. This is at the 226 bar, so when I listen, I'm going back to this shit right here. <laughs> Make sure that's in the edit. Make sure that's in the edit. Edit out. Edit out. But I don't like putting my foot on the couch. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I put my foot on the couch. They got money. I still, Cocaine, I'm hell of a drug, right? I'm not taking Rick. that picture for it to get out. Well, my, my, yeah, that, 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 would, that would be my question. Yeah. Like, was was this just like y'all private White House photographer that was in y'all bedroom just shooting? Was that what they No, I'm just making oh, up. You, oh, know, oh, you know how you know how oh, the, the, cool. you know how the president <laughs> <talks> got <about laughs> their own photographers yeah. with them, and these, these pictures you may never see. You right. know. So my question is, was this y'all private photographer that just snapped a, just happened to snap a picture, of y'all, or did y'all pose and leak this picture? Right. You know, because right. if y'all pose and leak the picture, I mean, y'all grown, but they I, probably. but I wouldn't want, I wouldn't want my woman's ass out like that and me laying in the bed like yeah, that. That's always up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. Then, I mean, I mean, for what it's worth, is artistically taken. It ain't like you see pews and yeah. shit. 
I don't know how artistic that was. I mean, I'm saying artistic in the sense that you I mean, can I can, see I can take that. With, I can take that with my iPhone. No, I'm not saying artistic in like far as the quality. I'm talking about as far as them not showing. They even did show Jay Z nipples. Hey, <laughs> you know okay, you said like, it was a tasteful pick. Yeah, so I mean, that's why I say art. You know what I'm saying? Like anybody just throw some asshole naked shit on this from Kim Kardashian. That's you know what I'm saying? Like you don't consider that art, but like. I don't. The only thing that that caught me off guard that you don't expect that of Jay Z. Yeah. Jay Z don't even really fuck with social media, so to see him doing that shit, we gotta understand we came up with Jay Z. You know what I'm saying? He ten years older than us, but that was you know what I'm saying, dude. We he hustle hustle. Uh, I don't love these bitches. You know what I'm saying? And it's all part of maturity. He got three kids. You know what I'm saying? And he enjoying his family life. You know what I'm saying? So. It, I mean, him doing that, it just showed me that he yeah, I mean, proud of being there with Beyonce. You know what I'm saying? I show my bitch off. It, it ain't a bad capture. It's the fact that the capture is public. If you, you know what I'm saying? If if, if you and your wife... I can imagine the private ones. <laughs> Beyonce oh. got a mouthful of hoes. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> but, but, but you know you know what I'm saying? Like, you, you might have some family... And I can't imagine that. Pause. Allow me to say that. I can't imagine that. I didn't mean to say that. <laughs> Go ahead. Go now ahead. You, now you want to edit. Yeah. Now you want to edit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll leave that in there, too. But, yeah, I, I mean, like, your grandma got some pictures with your granddaddy. <laughs> they were never supposed to be leaked. They were, you know what I'm saying? Like, once grandma and granddaddy died, your aunt is going through this album like, look, I got to get rid of these right. before, you know, the family get a hold of them. You know, so if, if it goes in that private album with grandma and granddaddy, that's their business. But once you start leaking grandma with her, uh, you know what I'm saying, with her little nighty on and grandma with her thong on, I think that's problematic. What it is, they know what kind of response it will generate. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. So mm-hmm. them, I'm wondering who's going to drop an album. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Prior to tour. Like, you have to, like, one, and that could be it. And you would think that they're not the type of people who need yeah. publicity. But, I mean, they just having fun. Yeah. And this is the shit Jay-Z don't normally do. It's like when 50 Cent had that goofy-ass tie on, the short his sleeve uh, showing. Man. Like, what are you doing? But it's done. You know what I'm saying? So, oh, when Cameron tried to come at Jay for wearing flip-flops, you yeah. know what I'm saying, the Gucci flip-flops. Yeah, I'm going to say, in the 90s, that was a good diss. That would have been incredible. <laughs> John <laughs> clapped OGs with yeah. the- But that's <laughs> um, And that just goes to show the Teflon Don in Jay-Z yeah. to where you can't crack him about shit. You can't talk about he got happy hair. You can't say that he got them goofy ass knees when he's jumping in the pool. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. You can't. Jay Z is probably the most infallible rapper out here. Cause for one, he's old. He's about to be fifty and ne- next year. Yeah. But he's not old and lame. He still fucking dictates cool. And people don't understand that what it is, it's like, and I go to the Tupac shit, I'm going to make my analogy of Tupac after this. Jay-Z said some shit, the rappers of A group below him say it, and A group below them say it. And they not knowing that they got it from Jay-Z because it came from their chain. Mm-hmm. Just like Tupac, where I say this, every single reputable rapper in the game wants to be Tupac. A part of them wants to be Tupac, whether it's the... They like me, but I want them to love me like Pac. Or you, like you, like or you talking about thug shit, or you just emulating him in any sense. Tupac is the most influential rapper ever. Even Jay Z is a better Jay Z than these were his peers. You can tell Nas wanted to be Tupac. You know what I'm saying? At some point in time, but when that's nobody, that's not a bad person to have aspirations to look up to. Just like Jay Z, far as the entertainment industry and shit, he's done what he done. I mean, so that I think that the shocking thing for me is him. In that picture, and I'm gonna say I've never seen Jay Z with a cool look on his face. But that nigga look like he got caught. <laughs> he looks like he got caught in that picture, man. man. Yeah, I mean, it was cool though, man, for what they doing. I guess Damn. it would have been real salacious if you would have seen Salon sitting in the background with a bat, some shit like that to make it real. You know what I'm saying? But he got a lot of. Uh, they talked about that shit a lot. Um, I'm going to holler at my people see if we get you in the picture with Beyonce they can get you out the picture that fast. <laughs> that so he can say he let Well, we got uh, um, the push of truth before we get into act now. Bet, bet. Yeah. Everybody, we was up in arms and talking about the push T versus Drake. It's been, water's been poured on it. The beef is allegedly over. Push of one. It was lame anyway. 
It was lame. It was lame. What do you think well, it was lame? Yeah. It was lame, man. Push him, but cause push him crushed him. Uh, he just did an interview. Come on, there wasn't no crushing. No crushing happened. You don't think he crushed Drake? No that crush. was ether Yeah, that was level. crushing. Yeah, that, no, man, that was reaching. almost no Vaseline. Yeah. There was no ether. There yeah. was no that, ice cube. Matter of fact, matter of fact, matter Y'all fact. thirsty, man. Go Y'all ahead. thirsty. Go ahead. Hold on. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I want to hear the thing. Go ahead. I'm going to hear this. Listen, man. Listen, it's like... We 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 so hungry these days. We so hungry that we get a little bit of a scuffle, and we like, man, that was the best fight I ever saw. You know, what I'm saying that's like uh, uh, Mayweather's last fight. Come on, come on, dog, like that. It was cool, but it, it, I mean, we ain't gonna be talking about it years from now. Like, you know, I I can't compare that to any early. Beef. I can't compare that to Jay Z Nas. I can't compare that to any real rap battle. Okay, so let's not compare the whole beef. I'm, let's compare the no, actual yeah, so yeah. the actual response. Like the push the T. I want I want the way you feel about that because that response was as far as the response that was like a that was a right hook. It was he had a couple lines, man. Look, listen, push your T can rap, and I don't think anybody can argue that push your T can rap. But that's where it stopped. In my opinion, that's where it stopped. It was like, okay, Pussy T was rapping. So did you like Duffy? No, no, it was all, it was all boring. It was, all, I slept on the whole battle, man. I was like, I was like, this is, this isn't even worth my time. This is how come I rate this as a big win for Pussy T. Yeah, oh man. I said Jay Z was the most unfallible rapper, infallible rapper. It might be Drake. Yeah, Drake, Drake has an incredible fan base where he can do the most weak shit ever, and he still even his they stands got the ghost to, right. They they even, they, taking up for it. I could not believe that. He shit. used the word broski. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> what am a broski? What? Right. So listen, J- Drake is the best lane he ever. He's so I'm thinking like there's nothing Pusha T. Joe Budden, my favorite rapper he in the game right now. Millennials. Yeah. <laughs> Joe Budden gave him three heater ass songs and nobody gave a fuck. Nobody. Me and Corey. Yeah, we don't know. We don't know He ate his ass up. Another nobody toy. cared. He said three all people. factual, all dope shit, but nobody cared. I didn't think it was anything anybody could say to make people be like, what the fuck? No one knew Drake had that son except the people who's supposed to know. Yeah. He drags that out. He drags out the fact that it's by a porn star who you had. First, you asked the bitch to get an abortion. Yeah. Then you got you got to go on IG and tell, take them horror pictures down, look motherly. Yeah. That shit. Clank their that whole shit, IG. And what it is, it's, it's the expose. When you pulling shit out of people's closets and shit, that is what made that shit like what the fuck. And it's not that when we say to uh, Floyd last fight, that was against Conor McGregor. Yeah. Let's don't go there. Let's go Buster Douglas, Mike Tyson. Yeah. Pusher was Buster Douglas. People don't know Buster Douglas. Yeah, he wasn't Buster, Buster win, Douglas yeah. was a formidable heavyweight. Yeah. He wasn't just a nobody, but that's how people treated him. Tyson's king of the world. Drake is king of the world. Nobody is expecting for somebody to come swinging for Tyson and Drake like this. Then the side swaps. When he said that shit about 40, this is oh, when you were there at Tupac range. Yeah. When you saying fuck everything, nigga, don't you yeah. don't want you to go sick of or like, something? 40 looking like 80. Don't want you to go sick of sell or something? It's along them lines yeah. and shit. It's along lines I fuck your bitch. So he done hit him art, like from an artist standpoint. Then he done hit him on some personal shit. The personals. Yeah. Like, it, I'm talking about when the fans start saying shit like he shouldn't have got that personal. Yeah. Then you know he, something yeah. major has done happen that Tyson is reaching for his mouthpiece and he yeah. can barely get up. That is where that shit went to, man. Now look, just to capitalize on that, do y'all know Drake was about, he's about, I don't know if he's about to or is he about to do uh, uh, um, that did his first did right. shit. Yeah, he killed that. Push and killed all that. Fuck all that. Fuck all that. 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 Fuck all that. He was trying to raise his son. Yeah. Yeah. He was going to introduce his son. Like the Adidas. Adidas. That's the name of the Adidas line. That's why all this shit ties in together. His son is he, a diamond. He ruined the press run that Drake was about going so with his son. He's going to expose him on that shit. Every time his line get brought up, guess who's going to come in with it? Yeah. Push it he was about to do a DJ Khaled with his son. Okay. With Adidas. Uh, that's why and he crushed all that shit. And and it's not so it's not the best diss song ever. Yeah. But for the climate we in and the juggernaut that Drake is, that shit is saying something. Because we've never seen a... The only time we've seen something almost similar 
with how 50 did uh, Ja Rule. Yeah. Because Ja Rule was at his peak at the time. Yeah, 50 Cent ja was the newcomer and shit. Yeah. Ja, ja Rule putting out hit, hit, hit. Then he said, he's singing. And everybody said, that nigga singing. Yeah. And they quit listening to him. And then 50 started singing. Yeah. yeah. And then 50 yeah. started singing. Yeah. Yeah. Same format. Hell yeah. So, I mean, just on the, on that stand alone, man, I, I cannot say that this was not incredible this song. I liked it. I just... Okay. I, I'm... I'm, I'm Maybe it's because, you know, we get a little older. I just, it doesn't affect Drake. Like, you say it, it, it affected oh, his. We gotta see. We gotta see. Yeah. yeah. Oh, we yeah. have to see. He, 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 pushed, he pushed an old album back a month. Listen, it affected his ego. It affected his ego. His pockets. Listen, it affected his ego, man. Pusher T is never going to be a, a, a top-notch um, uh, sellers. Sell and I think he went in knowing that, though. Yeah, he, he went in. He, 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 like he, he said, he, he just did an interview with GQ that cut you off. He was like, I never planned on outselling Drake. He said, but I did understand all this sympathy for Drake. said, when did sympathy become involved in rap beats? Like, you know, he even brought the line, like, even the, the when he got sick of sell or something, or even to Hope, he was like, uh, younger with the, he like, you got the cancer, younger, pull your pants up, talking to Prodigy. Like, everybody took shots at Prodigy Sickness. But even when Drake took a shot at Kid Cudi's depression right. and everything else, and like he mentioned his wife, like I never knew it was this much sympathy. And he like, this not even fun no more. He said, but I went into it not saying I could outsell Drake. He said, but there's been others who have outrapped Drake, i.e. Joe Budden. He said, but I figured I had to come at an angle that nobody, because Drake has been untouchable. Like his fans always took up for what everything he did. So this is where I went, and now everybody went like, oh. Now you too personal. Uh, now, like, man, to push the album back. Man, to push the Adidas press run back. So, like, he... Well, like, they tried yeah. to make fun. Like, he shouldn't have got personal, but we just had Drake talking about Kid Cudi. Uh, yeah, the mental pressure, issues. Yeah, yeah. mental issues. Yeah. I, don't, I don't think anything's off off guard. I don't think anything's off the table in rap beat. Me neither. I, so, think, I think you should be able to say whatever you want to say. So, how do you feel about Jay since the, the actual beef was kind of whack and boring to you? How do you feel about Jay Prince stepping in and saving his... his his cash cow. Uh, real quick, real quick, real yeah. quick, because I don't forget. I want to ask you this. Do you think that being out of the battles you've seen historically coming up in music and shit from our era, that this kind of desynthesizes for you? I, I, it's been battles since the beginning of the time. Yeah, the yeah. The bridge is over to... Yeah, I, I, um, I, I, think, I think battle is part of the culture. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, like, Anybody who don't want to see a rap battle ain't about the culture, right. um, but I don't, I don't know, man. It just it, when 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 stuff when stuff starts feeling manufactured to me, and I and I'm not saying this particular beef is manufactured, um, but it doesn't. I don't know. It just doesn't. It doesn't get me the same way Jay and Nas did. You know, that's, like, that's Tyson versus Ali. Yeah. Yeah. That's the, there's yeah. no upset factor in that. You sit there and you wait for the first one to die. You watch yeah. it something classic. We've and never they went seen, personal too. We've never seen a rap battle with considerably what people argue is the greatest rappers ever. We've never seen that high level of a battle before. But so I mean that everything else from there is downhill. I'm just saying like I ain't, I'm not about to go out on that balcony right now and be arguing with some dude in the parking lot. Like and that's what I kind of feel like this battle was. It's like you know, so you think he's too much? Wait, of who a star. you equate to do the parking lot? Who's up on push the about to be the parking lot to you? Pushes the parking lot, dude, and Drake's on the balcony. Like, yo, like, you know, like it's just. So you say he's too successful yeah. to respond? No, I like no, that. It, it, no. I'm not saying he's too successful to respond. I'm saying that I know y'all feel like Pusher brought heat. You know what I'm saying? Y'all, y'all, in, y'all in agreeance that he brought heat. I feel like he had some lines, but I guess for for me, I wanted something. Maybe I wanted a song. Maybe the beat was boring. You want to hit him up? I, I, yeah, I wanted something that I could get excited about. Like people was like, "Yo, he shouldn't have said this. He shouldn't have said that." Like that, that, that still isn't like. It wasn't said in a witty way that made me like I'm never gonna forget that line. What? Tick, 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 tick. That shit was hard. That shit was. Listen, I'll go back and listen. I'll go back and listen. How much time he got left? Tick, tick, tick. I'll go back and listen. Searching for something. I am six, six, six. A. I'll go back and listen. I got the devil flow. Six, six, A. But real quick though, 
It's been jumping off first, uh, considering nobody's the LL can and this type of shit. Yeah. Like you said, it's the nature of the culture and shit, but just to go to Jay Prince, I don't like when people get involved like that because now it seems different. It seems yeah. like it's more than hip hop. When we say we like, I like rap beef. I don't like yeah. shit that go past yeah. rap. Yeah, they'll know, take shit. it off wax. Keep um, it on. That's how come you got to be cautious with the shit you do sell because yeah. everybody don't got thick skin. Mm-hmm. You tell me my homeboy about dying shit that I got, or you uh, talk about so. When you take it to a certain level, you have to be ready for the consequences and mm-hmm. shit. And if it was getting into some street shit, it's cool that Jay Prince stepped in. Like, I don't yeah. know the details of it. There's rumors going about what happened, but if yeah. it was to prevent some street shit and shit, I'm all for that. But Yeah, I think that's what it is. Uh, Drake ain't come out and say shit about nobody else, though. He can't. He can't. I don't hear no subs. He's taking that away from Drake. He's yeah. taking that he's He can't be that saying away. no subliminals, no. I'm the, how do you feel about ghostwriters? Like, as long as it's good music, you don't care. I mean, at, at at this stage, hip hop isn't what it used to be. We talking about your we talking about your fielders, yeah. How do you feel about ghostwriters in hip hop or just write our reference tracks? Like, it, it this it, it, it's this is kind of a mixed message, but it, it's it's based off of who I'm listening to, man. Like, if I know that somebody's writing for Nas, I feel some kind of way, but it's been my stomach hurt. You know what I'm saying? saying? Like, well, I, we know I, ain't nobody writing for yeah, Nas. Yeah, but though. but Drake. Like, I don't take him serious. Yeah, like, yeah. Drake is for when I want to go to the club and dance and holler at it. But can, Woman. can he be considered, considered one of the greatest to you? Since Hell no. Okay, well, that's he, he wasn't, right? If he, he wrote all that shit, he wouldn't be the greatest. He, 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 can be, he, can, he can be considered one of the great party makers. So him and Jay-Z, like, there's, like Jay-Z knows how to make party cuts. He don't so much these days, but he had a run where he just was lighting the club up. Drake understands uh, music. He, he, Drake has a system. Drake is a business. Just like for a second, Lil Wayne was a business. You know what I'm saying? They knew how to put songs out that would go hard in the club and that would get a cult following. And that's what Cali do. Yeah. Cali didn't reach this kind of level, though. Yeah. yeah. So, it, you know, it's like it's like me being mad at Michael Jackson because he didn't write uh, Beat It or Thrill It. You know what I'm saying? Like, that is I, different with R&B, though. Well, it's different because we say it's different. No, no it is different. I, it listen, is totally listen, different. Totally listen, different. Wait, 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 wait. I just find Tyrese didn't write Sweet Lady. He said he didn't write like 90% of the songs. <laughs> this is how, I'll go real quick, this is how I feel it to be great. I feel like a great musician writes. That's how come I put Stevie Wonder Prince so high above yeah. everybody. But else. it's not that Drake don't write. He just don't write all of it. He don't write 90% of his shit. I mean, I ain't gonna yeah. say that for Yeah, that might be a stretch. That's a whole lot you see. I, yeah. I mean, I think, every I think time you look up again, I think, I think Drake writes way more than he gets ready okay, for. Okay, fifty. His, his first mixtape was good. Yeah. So if he wrote he that, got sued behind that, did he? Yes. I still, I ain't gonna see here and think that nigga puffy. <laughs> nah, you know, Drake, I ain't gonna Drake, Drake, Drake write a lot of his own <laughs> shit. It's just that him having anybody write anything is what put that blemish on him. Yeah. But far as uh, music go, this is what separates. Like my favorite singer probably just vocally all the time is Donnie Hathaway. Okay. No, I don't think I don't. I've never heard nobody else sing. Uh, far as female, uh, Whitney, Nina Simone, Nina Simone. But a lot of them weren't right next up. Exactly. Yeah, so yeah. that's how come I would take a Prince over him, over a Donnie Hathaway, in that context. Both of them great singers, but oh, just that man. Prince had a different sauce on there. He had more talent and oh, shit. Oh man. Listen, he wrote a range listen, and vocal. Listen, all his- listen. I mean, Princeton. Li- listen, I, I I really shouldn't say this on the air, but I I don't care. <coughs> Princeton released a lot of garbage. He had Princeton, a fucking forty year Princeton, career. Princeton yeah. released. A, Princeton had a lot of garbage projects. A lot. How many? A, a lot. Doing, doing okay, that fuck new, that. That, that new yeah, power yeah, generation. Up. Prince had a lot of trash. When, listen, this is what you understand. Is that during the slave when he's out the When this alleged Prince trash. Prince is the artist who tries new things. Yeah. He don't put himself in a box. He don't try that to make, make it, it listen, good. Listen, listen, that no, don't no, make no. it good. Kanye ain't trying new things. That don't make it good. Somebody like New Power Generation shit. Yeah. I'm about to look at Listen, shit, man. Wait a minute. Listen. What's your favorite Prince shit? Listen. What's your favorite Prince shit? I mean, my favorite Prince stuff is the greatest hits. Uh, oh, you yeah, had you just took it out. No, so, no, I'm saying I could, I could, I could go through and name some of my favorite Prince joints. But what I'm saying is, we we like to we like to uh, when it comes to Prince's I career. I don't man aside. Listen, when, when, when it comes to Prince's, aside. maybe you just like a part. He had 39 yeah. studio albums. That's what. Listen, when it comes to Prince's Three career, we albums. we don't ever yes. comment on the on 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 how 20 of them was garbage. 
Twenty goddamn, ain't nothing bad. Twenty times. Yeah, listen, 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 man. When we go out there, last time this shit stink, it was nineteen. After nineteen, the shit didn't stink no more. Listen, (laughs) man. Listen, when when Prince was going by the sign, he released a lot of garbage. A lot of garbage. Hold on, hold on, hold on. No, No, no. it's not subjective, man. Signs of the times is when he had the little slave shit. Listen, 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 listen. Listen, I'm a Prince fan. I'm a Prince fan, but I'm not gonna, but I'm not gonna lie about. I'm not gonna lie about it. I'm not gonna lie about it. Love Simple the album come that with the um the slave shit. I'm not gonna lie about it, you know. Black I'm a huge Prince oh, fan. Yeah. Huge Prince fan. But you know Tell I, me the white Prince shit. Tell me the white Prince shit. I yeah. must know. Hold on, let me let me, me. I must know. I wanna Here, I, I name them in order. You the can tell me whack the last, good. The last uh, Prince shit that too. I love Here we go. was the shit with that uh call me call me. Yes, that musicology. That shit, yeah, that's my last Great yeah. Prince album now really For you was his first one. For you was his first one. Uh, it's in order seventy eight. That was for you. Yes. I you look at the discography. Don't act like you just know the shit. No, <laughs> yeah, I never said that. I know, but I'm just like I'm looking at. I got the discography up. He so for you was the first one. Prince was the second one. Dirty mind controversy. Let me know when I reach a whack one. Nineteen ninety nine. Purple rain. Around the world in a day. Parade. Sign of the Times, Love Sexy. Oh, this shit was hard as fuck. Batman. Oh, this shit was hard as fuck. Graffiti he, Bridge. He, he fucked up. He pulling that motherfucker. Diamonds and Pearl. Under the Cherry Moon. Under the Cherry Moon. Wait, Under the Cherry Moon was 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 a hit. That that yeah, shit. That, wait, that, hold on, hold on. We're not talking about Charles Topper, but how can Good I music. stand to? And even the city wrote for more day. This shit. Audio, listen, I'm, I'm not. I'm not. Listen, come. I'm not pulling away from his talent. I give you come. I'm not pulling away uh, from his talent. Pause, nigga. Pause. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The album come. Yeah. <laughs> listen, I'm not pulling away from his talent. How did we get here? Because I was over here talking. I know exactly what I'm talking about. I'll take him over, him over uh, Donny Hathaway. Okay, Cal- so, so uh, somebody like a Donny Hathaway. Like. I didn't like every Donnie Hathaway album. No, I no, I, I didn't like either. I like his duets with, uh, like, I mean, uh, what's the chick name who do the... The club, the Big Bird Flag? Yeah, Big Bird Flag. I didn't like them duets. Yeah. I, I, oh, we were talking about Drake, the, the difference Drake. between, you know, hip-hop writers versus R&B writers and non-writers. Um, I think, I think because the way we were brought up, we were, we were brought up in, like, the, basically the elements of hip-hop when it was birthed. So that that meant that what you were putting out represented you, and it was a way for you to get out. It was a way for you to get money. It was a way for you to elevate your family and your friends around you. Listen, man, hip hop ain't been that in a long time. It ain't been that in a long time. Hip hop is just it's literally just a cash cow. It's just a business, just like Chipotle and Starbucks and and McDonald's. Hip hop is the same way, man. But it's more braggadocious than hip hop. Like you wants to be like I'm the best at this. I'm the king. Not always, man. I don't think Migos care about being the best. I think they care about uh, riding this out as long as they can because it's got to end. And I think that's how most people approach the game now. I don't think they approach it from I'm trying to elevate my art. I'm trying to elevate my flow. I'm trying to be the best. I think people are like listen. A lot of people use if, Migos if I can get now. a couple albums out of this. You know what I'm saying? I can buy my mom my house. And I ain't saying shit because yeah. I was I was thinking about this one day. I was thinking about like when these rappers come up when Little Yachty, because I ain't think he write this shit down. <laughs> <laughs> I think he be like turtle on the wall. You can say shit. Listen to me. Rock that shit. And yeah. then he come and hit. And I be like, damn, like when you first started, did you want to be the best? Like that's I wonder yeah. that shit. Nah, that shit was crazy to nah, me. Man, now you look at it like that. It's... They ain't interested in being the best. They look they they interested in owning the McDonald's franchise. I mean, it, it's yeah. like they said, Wayne. It's like they use it as way. It, it's no love in it no more. It's it's yeah. love what it can do for me as opposed to what I can do for it. And it's hard to knock. It's hard to knock it from a, a common sense uh, perspective. But from an artistic perspective, I can piss all over. Exactly. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? But Absolutely. Let's move on to uh, the, the main event. Yeah. Old Soul Entertainment, this your uh, company. Yep. And, and what does this uh, this company entail? Uh, we do event planning, marketing, promotions for business, restaurants, nonprofits, whoever. But the, the more important thing that we do 
is for the last 13 years, we've given uh, the Indianapolis uh, performing artist community an opportunity to perform. So whether you're a DJ, whether you're a singer, whether you're a dancer, we're always curating events to where we're only hiring local folks. So everybody on this Prince Michael Jackson flyer, they're local. You know, you flip it over, there's another band, a separate band, you know. So that's what we do. We, we, we try to create opportunities for Indianapolis performing arts. And it's not performing artists. And it's not, everybody gets paid. Everybody on that flyer gets paid, you know. But I, I don't believe in this, you know, you're doing it for the art. No, if we're going to talk about supporting artists, then we got we to gotta treat it like any other business. You, you want somebody to come in here and paint your house, paint your wall, you're going to pay them, you know. Same thing with these singers, same thing with these DJs, same thing with these rappers. Whatever we booking, we need to pay them. That's what's up, man. Uh, so you believe in doing good business? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. How long have you been doing the uh, old Southern thing? We're like, how long have you had this company? How did uh, it start? 13 years. 13 years, yeah, 05. We started in 2005. Uh, so I used to throw parties. I've thrown parties my whole life. Like, uh, my older, my older brother was a DJ. He wasn't like a, a popular DJ, but he was like a bedroom DJ. Um, so, like, I've been throwing parties since I was like 13, 14. We used to throw parties out of the church at 46 in college across the from where that 7-Eleven was. Mm -hmm. um, Limelight's first party that he ever DJ was a party we threw at 15 at 39th and Ruckel. Um, one turntable. Did you know Limelight name before it was Limelight? Relax. Yeah, uh, <laughs> uh, uh, Hectic. Gemini. Uh, okay. At one point he was going by Hectic. Yeah, it was Hectic. Gemini to Hectic. Yeah. So, I mean, I grew up in the party scene, the house party scene. You know what I'm saying? It was just different back then. You know, you could get teenagers together. You could throw a house party. As long as somebody, one, a parent or somebody, an uncle, agreed to give you the, the living room or the basement, then it was popping, right. you know? Um, it was also different then because if you said you were a DJ, you had to have a record collection, you know? And everybody can't afford a record collection. So now, you know what I'm saying, everybody Serato. can go to iTunes, you got Serato, you can download it, you can go to Guitar Center, get your little controller, call you a DJ. No, back then, you had to own two copies of everything, because think about it, you got to switch from the instrumental to the words, you know what I'm saying, when you're doing your mixing. So you had to buy two copies of every record. Records weren't cheap, you know what I'm saying? You're talking about a single, might be, you know, 7 to $10. You're talking about a full record, might be 10 to 15 maybe 20 depending on what it was. Mm -hmm. So you're talking about thousands and thousands of dollars just on your collection. And DJs didn't loan records. Do you think that, like, I transitioned to more uh, digital, do you think that's helped or hurt? Uh, it's it's hmm, both. Um because, you know, the only reason I got to go to the parties when I was younger was because, you know, there were 10 crates that needed to carry. And my brother, he didn't want to carry them himself. So, you know, folks used to think DJs used to show up with entourages because they were trying to be hard. They was a crew. Nah, they didn't want to carry them crates by That's themselves. manual labor. Yeah, yeah, man. Yeah, so you walk in with a, a, a crate in your hand, you part of the DJ crew or whatever. But um, being able to walk into a venue with just a laptop and plug into the system... You know, that's priceless. Um, uh, I'm also, I don't know if you know, I started the Decademics DJ School in Broward, but we had a DJ school. We teach on turntables, and um, oh, that's dope. and then we incorporate the new software. So, yeah, that's been going for four years now. And how old did you say you was when you threw your first part? Um, 14, 15. Is there anything that you took from back then that you incorporate today? Absolutely. I mean, it's really just about the people. Um, you know, you know, people sometimes they, you know, they, they want to, they want to pick sides on, you know, like if you, you throw on parties or you throw on events, it's like, you know, well, is it, is it the, is it the Nas vibe or is it the Migos vibe? You know, is it the Erica Badu vibe or is it the, you know, the Nicki Minaj vibe? And it's like, I'm all about getting people out and people having a good time. You know what I'm saying? So I want all of it, you know, like. Um, I'm not catering to a particular demographic, and I don't like it when people try to push me into that. So, because growing up in hip hop, you listen to everything, man. You listen to rock, you listen to R and B. It, it wasn't uncommon for all that stuff to get played at the parties, you know. So, that that's how I approach the business, you know. I, I throw a big cash money no limit party every year. Five hundred people show up. It sells out before the doors open. 
and uh, you know, so, uh, there's a part of my demographic that doesn't like that. They like the Erica Badu, Lauren Hill party I throw. You know, so it, pick and choose, pick and choose. That's that's on y'all, but I don't have to pick and choose. So keep yourself flexible. That allows you to touch on uh, different crowds. Absolutely, and and different businesses. You know, uh, the IMA, the Museum of Art, hires me all the time to, you know, coordinate stuff there. So. Mm. You know, you just got you got to be open. You know, as a businessman, you can't you know close yourself in. And well, even though you said that you uh, don't cater to a particular demographic, if you were a part of a demographic, which part would you be in? If you had to choose one, I mean, being a music lover, you like them both. But if you just had to choose one, which crowd would you be in? Uh, I mean, I personally, um, I'm into good writers. You know what I'm saying? So whoever the writers are, you know. The Quincy's. Yeah, no, no. I'm talking across the board. I'm talking, right. to, if you're a good writer in rock music, if you're a good writer in hip-hop, if you're a good writer in R&B, then that's who I roll with. So right. by default, I end up rolling with the Nas's and the Jay-Z's. By default, mm -hmm. I end up rolling with the some of the old school singers, the, mm -hmm. the uh, you know, like you said, Donny Hathaway or uh, Otis Redding, um, you know, folks like that. Um, so yeah, by default that's where I find myself at. But I don't, I'm not one of these people to sit around and, and hate on a, a Migos or even a Drake. I, I actually like Drake. I'm actually a Drake fan. But people get mad at me when I say that. I hate you good. Yeah, I people, you people, good. people, yeah. People, people get mad at me when I say it. But I'm like, <laughs> that's why you didn't like the uh, push. <laughs> 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 nah, it was boring. It was boring to me. But yeah, but. Well, and you said you did this 13 years ago. Yeah, we yeah we started this in '05. I mean, I was already doing parties prior to that, but uh, you know, uh, one of my guys he played in the league in the NFL, and after he got out, he was like, you know, you're pretty good at you know doing these parties, so you should consider approaching it as a business. I wasn't even thinking about it as a business at the time. I was working a regular job, and you know, so uh, we started you know hosting parties under the business name and. Thirteen. Years. I have. I haven't had a job in eight years. I haven't clocked in in eight years. That's like the most beautiful thing I've heard all day. And I have. A, I have <laughs> a mortgage, and my daughter goes to private school, and you know. Is there anything else you do besides icon parties? Like, yeah. So, um, I mean, I, there's lots of things. You got to go to oldsoulent.com, but we have an all ages open mic that happens every second Saturday in Fountain Square. So you singer, you MC, you a poet, you a goddamn spoon player. I don't really care. But anybody can come out and perform it. Like I said, it's all ages. So that's every second Saturday at Fletcher Place Art and Books. Um, and then we do a hip-hop version of that called the Dojo. Um, that's down up by Garfield Park, next to Garfield Park. And that's every third Friday, so that'll be this Friday. So it's all MCs. We usually have three features. There's usually a DJ. There's a host. Anybody can come in, hop in the ciphers. Um, everybody gets paid. Once again, everybody... Anything that I'm doing, to where I'm asking artists to get involved, everybody gets paid. Don't expect to pay your, your, you know, your bills off of it, but you know, <laughs> right. yeah. So that's that's first Friday. Your work. Yeah, and then we every first Friday uh, we do a party in Fountain Square called uh, Back to the Future, and it's an open format dance party. So uh, we go from like Drake to Tears for Fears to Nirvana to Jay Z to whatever's danceable. I don't tell the DJs what to play; it just has to be danceable. So that's probably the most diverse crowd you're gonna see in Indianapolis. Like it's yeah. Corey comes, it's white, it's black, it's Hispanic, it's I don't even know what your ethnicity are, but you find like they there. And we also the the thing that's unique about this event is we do what's called two by four sets. So it's four turntables, it's two DJs, and all of them are going at once. So the DJ next to you doesn't they don't know what each other's gonna play. They're just, you know, if this Rihanna song is at 99 BPMs and they know that this Beyonce song is at 101, they're going to try to mix them in together. Yeah. But they don't know. They're competing the whole night against each other to bring the songs in. So, that's dope. That's yeah. dope. Um, how you came up with the name Old School Entertainment? Because you said 13 oh, years so. ago. Oh, oh so. so. Um, it's, it has nothing to do with soul music. Uh, people, people make that mistake. It has to do with um, how we were raised, like people always told me and my crew that we have old souls, as in like we were ahead of our time or like we we have wisdom beyond our years on this earth. So that's kind of where the name comes from. You know, we have old souls, um, so old soul entertainment. But the soul is a, a acronym. The soul stands for sounds of universal love. 
Mm-hmm. So, you know, we're not, you know, we're not trying to, once again, box anybody in. So whatever, you know, your, your, your interests are with music, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? We're here to try to push it. So sounds of universal love, not of hip hop, not of R&B, not of rock, you know. So on your event that you have coming up on the Vogue, Saturday, yeah, the 23rd. June 23rd, um, it's, it's Prince and Michael Jackson on the flyer. Are these um, impersonators? No, hell no. You do music. Hell no. So That's it's just, bad. yeah, it's just uh, two, two live bands. The, the event basically consists of, uh, it's all local artists. We'll have, uh, you know, two live bands. A couple of the artists you'll recognize, uh, Bashiri Asad is on the show. Uh, Allison Victoria, Renee King. Uh, basically, the first two to three hours of the event is going to be live entertainment. So they'll be covering Prince and Michael Jackson songs mm. with full bands. And then um, we'll have a little bit of choreography, some dancers, always dancers involved. And then after that, it goes into straight DJs. So we got you know four of the hottest DJs in the city. Obviously, Metronome, Limelight. Uh, Nico Flores is like a, the, the new the new guy in charge. He's a beast. He's like winning competitions all over the country, and uh, of course Action Jackson. So uh, it's a it's a great time, man. You know, it's only like fifteen bucks to get in in advance. Um, we do you know anywhere from six hundred to a thousand people every year. I got so. a question. It's kind of a two part question. Uh, did you get the vote? The first, like this is not your first time at the vote. I've been going, but. Was it hard to get the venue at the Vogue for your first time? And like, you know, how do you keep, like, how, how do you keep your business going with the Vogue? Like, was it hard for you to get into the Vogue, is what I, basically what I'm asking. No, the, what, I, what I tell people all the time, it's, it's really just about consistency. Like anything, like with this podcast, you know what I'm saying? You can get frustrated tomorrow and be like, nah, we're not doing this anymore. But what I tell, uh, you know, young people is consistency is the key. So if you keep doing something, you do something long enough, people will start to notice you, okay. you know, so that's kind of what happened, you know, um, the, the, the Vogue had, you know, I already had a sort of a loose relationship with the Vogue. Okay, uh, another kind of hard from back in the day is going to the Vogue, how they like, uh, if you look like DK, if you got that on, you got to get yeah, out, you know, yeah. and I was wondering with your company, how hard was it for you to get into the Vogue? It, and start. it wasn't hard to get into the Vogue, and, and, I, and, I, and I, I pat the Vogue on the back because they've made a lot of changes over the years. For a while, there was a stigma that, it, you know, yeah. if you were black going to the Vogue, you was going to get not let in not or right. harassed or you couldn't wear certain things. They don't even have a dress code anymore. The staff has changed yeah. completely. So, uh, you know, and that's what kind of opened up doors for me. But, um, the, you know, the, the Vogue has kind of been generous to me. I mean, you know, we've done big shows. Uh, big Boy from Outkast and Killer Mike, we did that show, what, three, four years ago at the Vogue. Mm-hmm. Um, the, I, I can't complain about the Vogue. I will say, you know, in Indianapolis in general, I have experienced, um, you know, just pushback over the years um, from, from, you know, clubs, venues, just not wanting us there. I mean, that ain't no mystery. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And I, I've, I've experienced, uh, like... You know, direct racism, and I've, I've experienced like indirect. Like even with, like I went to the um, Biggie tribute party at the Jazz Kitchen, and it's odd that you got a jazz establishment to have a hip hop um, event. So I mean, yeah, you you just gotta you just gotta get to know people. I think it's easy to to generalize. The thing that people don't know about the Jazz Kitchen is the owner of the Jazz Kitchen is from the neighborhood. He lives in the neighborhood. He went to he graduated from Bravo High School. Um, you know what I'm saying? So he chose to open up a business in his neighborhood he grew up in. Um, Our side of college or the other side of college? Yeah. Um, I, I don't know exactly. Oh, yeah. I think they I think they had a house somewhere you know off of Broadway, like okay. 46th and Broadway or okay. something, or 43rd yeah. and Broadway. But um, the the point is is that he could have opened up his business anywhere, mm-hmm. but he chose to stay in the neighborhood. That's, so that's what's up. that for me, that's what I'm all about. It's like forming relationships with people. You know, we make all these generalizations about, you know, what we can expect is going to happen with our interactions with people. But you know, I get to know them on an individual basis, and if they're an asshole, it's going to reveal. Right. Well, um, 
on the flyer, like I said, you have. Well, matter of fact, you want to shout out the bands that were involved in it? Yeah, yeah. So uh, we got a Be On It band, and these cats have been touring the country. Not the country, they've been touring the world. These, they were out in Thailand for about two months uh, back in some national artist. Um, but uh, the, the, the people that are on their set is Bashuri Asai. Muffy Cakes was the one doing the uh, Soul Foods, what was it? The Soul Food Sundays at Epic, the Every Sunday joint. Um, uh, Allison Victoria, Renee King, uh, Okara, uh, CJ, um, Terry Adams, uh, uh, Jesse Thompson, Joe Elliott. So that's one band right there. And then uh, we also got the Soul Lounge Band, which is you know led by Brian Kelly and PJ Majors, but it's a lot of people on that. My cousin James Douglas is on it. It's just, for the amount of money, for $15 in advance, 20 at the door, like, I, it's just, it's such a great time, man. Is this a battle with bands type thing? No, no, just a, no, just they just perform. showcasing. Yeah, they just oh, showcasing, okay. yep. yep. Is, it, is it one band going last, like the headline? Nah, I'm, I'm sure they would like me to, like, to, to make it like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I haven't decided who's going first yet, but yeah. they're Bullish both. draws. Right, they're both uh, high quality bands, and I'm, I'm not concerned with whichever one goes first. And, uh, you know, TLC is involved, you know, they're promoting it. You should hear the, the, the ads on the radio um, this week and next week. Um, so we're happy to have them on board. This is their second year being involved. So, yeah. Those major moves. I want to ask you something, too, though. Now, I heard your Prince Slander. They went <laughs> oh, 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 oh. I must ask, because this is like the age-old question amongst everybody. Prince or Michael Jackson? No, no, no reason to just Prince or Michael Jackson. Um, Jay-Z or Nas. Prince or Michael Jackson. Jay-Z or Nas. Jay-Z, Prince or Michael Jackson. I mean, Prince is like the Nas. Michael's like the Jay-Z. Depends on what I want, man. You don't you agree with that? You gotta tap dance around gotta, this question. Yeah, you that's how you gotta do it. I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say offhand. Oh, so tap dance. I'm gonna right? say offhand. I'm gonna say offhand MJ because I want to dance the whole night. But, you know what I'm saying? You can dance to Prince music? Listen, Prince, Prince does make dance music. He does. Michael Jackson makes better dance music. Yeah, yeah that's he's what I'm saying. He makes music. better party music. Jay I'm talking about you sitting around your crib, you want to listen to Bean. Or <laughs> <laughs> well, Thriller. Man. Nah, she nah. Got the whole thing. Nah, <laughs> nah. And, and the thing about Prince is Prince can rap. You know what I'm saying? You listen to a couple yeah. of them songs. Prince was yeah. spitting. That get off, you know what I'm yeah, saying? Like, yeah, and Prince got a couple of sexy MF. He was rapping on that. You can cuss on him. They both, they <laughs> both super, they both super talents. I mean, even Michael Jackson, he fucking can beatbox. You know what I'm saying? The way he just put together music and sit, just sitting there. Um, I was a fan of both. When I was a kid, I actually wanted to be Michael Jackson for a spell. I think we all did with the jackets and the dolls. I got mm. Michael Jackson doll in there now. And no, uh, that. Huh? <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> If this is what brings me out of the closet, <laughs> <laughs> I got a Michael Jackson doll. I had one when I was a little boy, too. But Prince, I'm talking about, damn. I'm talking about, Prince, you can listen to his shit in any fucking closet. Like, his hits. His hits, yeah. And compared to Michael Jackson hits. Like, yeah. Like, no one wants to sit around the crib and listen to Beat It. Yeah. Nobody wants to listen to the, uh, the aforementioned Thriller. And, and Prince was writing it. Print, that's yeah. that's what we got. That's what we read earlier. Prince was writing that stuff. Mike wasn't writing the majority of that stuff. And this is like, this, but I don't want to act like I'm taking away from Mike because Mike was a talent for a long time with the Jackson Five. His fucking voice, his voice range is so fucking incredible. Mike and is I the mean, greatest I'm, entertainer of all time. I, hands down. Yeah, yeah. I don't, that can't be disputed. Yeah, that yeah. can't be disputed. Uh, it's people who don't even. Yeah, I would say don't even know Michael Jackson, but everybody knows. But people doing the moonwalk everywhere. People who don't speak English, but they can they can sing the whole lyrics mm -hmm. to any Michael Jackson song. If you if people you the same age, so we remember the bad tour. Do you remember watching TV? People just passing, passing out. out, man. I ain't you never seen nothing like that in my life. Yeah, man. but yeah, um, Annie Annie Annie's Annie's hometown. You know, what I'm saying Annie's from Indiana. You know, so you know, I mean, there's something. I mean, he could damn near have a party on his own. I just think it's good to, to group them. Oh, no, no. This, this is a perfect group. Because anytime the only person we compare to Prince, and it is like you said, the Jay-Z versus Nas, it, it's the Prince. That's the only person who you can go like uh, parallel to him and stuff. Uh, people have their favorites or whatever. Prince, he my favorite. But 
that's just my favorite. But if somebody argue for the case of Michael Jackson, I like Michael Jackson. I mentioned the Ben and uh, Thriller. But I like the Heaven Can Wait, the uh, Remember the Times. He has some incredible songs. And one of my favorite songs, that Dirty Diana. Yeah. Mm. That the fucking guitar riffs on that motherfucker, man. Yeah. I love that and song. We, we do that live every year yeah. with a live band. Do you? They destroy it. They destroy yeah, it. Like, I, like my, Michael Jackson music, it's real energetic. Like you said, the dance and the shit. The way you make me feel. And you broke down and dance. I'll do that car and shit. Yeah. Chasing that girl. Oh, as far as videos yeah. too, he's the greatest person. He had the greatest videos at every music. Yeah, he put, he put, even people don't remember like. And this matter of fact, this is gonna show our age a little bit. Remember, like we wait for world premiere Michael yeah, Jackson man, video. Come on now. He's at world premiere on on uh, broadcast TV. Yeah, CBS. NBC. Yeah, yeah. 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 Like, everybody said I remember when Bad came out. Yeah. Wesley Snipes in that this, motherfucker. Yeah. We he always had stars in this. We uh, all sitting around video. waiting. We at the center of a recreation, like Michael Jackson video come on tonight. I didn't even know that type of shit I heard. We run around watching that shit and nigga out here beefing. That's some shit. People don't know Michael Jackson wanted to fight. That nigga always wanted to fight between beat it and bad yeah. shit. Yeah. He wanted to show him up, I ain't no sissy. Well, there, there's a there's an interview. I don't know if you've seen it. But there's an interview from their interview on Prince, and Prince says that they actually wanted him to be Wesley Snipes in the video. And uh, he was like, he said, he said, what I look like letting Michael Jackson sing to me, your butt is mine. Oh, no. <laughs> like, that's, like, that's the first line of the song. Like, hey, I, see, I heard that interview. He's like, I ain't about to let him sing that. And that's some Sonny you type shit. That's like yeah. Jay-Z signing off the Def Jam. That's oh, what that'd be the equivalent of that. Yeah. But even though, like, we get the presentation, Michael Jackson was super smart. He was super intelligent and shit. I love the way he finessed, and I hate how they end up getting that shit back. But how he finessed the Beatles up there, shit. He, got the Beatles he bought that catalog. Yeah, he gave catalog. Little, and he didn't just buy them catalog, but he gave little Richard his shit back yeah. free of charge. People don't be talking about that benevolent shit. Niggas getting fucked out their money and shit. Michael Jackson gave it back to him. Here, this your shit. You worked hard for it. I don't mm-hmm. even want nothing back. People don't talk about that stuff, man. They just want to vilify. But back to also entertainment. Uh, this show is again uh, Saturday, June twenty third. Uh, doors open at 7 p.m. Show starts at 8. How long do these shows usually run? Uh, we'll probably be there till about 2 in the morning. Oh, that's what's uh, yeah. up. Yeah, that's, that's, yeah, that's I'll be there. Yeah, it's all all night thing, man. That's a party. Um, And this, this when you were saying about uh, hip-hop incorporating all different music, you said rock all this stuff. I want to ask you, I'm going to say this name, and it's going to determine how I feel about your musical taste. I want you to tell me what you think about this artist. Freddie Mercury. I mean, Freddie Mercury is, is, I mean, beast. Okay. Beast. Okay. I mean. Okay. Motherfuckers sleep on Freddie Mercury because he was a pansy. Yeah. <laughs> listen, Freddie is in my top six singers ever. Yeah. We talk about talent, uh, composing a song, writing a song, performing, voice, range. Yeah. People do not know Mary Frank. And they got a Queen movie coming out. And yeah. I'm sure I'm going to be the only heterosexual black man in that motherfucker. But I'm going to be in that motherfucker. Yeah. I love Freddie Mercury. Well, man. see, the way the way you feel about Freddie is how I feel about Otis Redding. Do you? Yeah. Well, the thing is, is that a lot of people don't... They just they forget that Otis Redding died, like, really early. Yeah, he was young as hell. You know what I'm saying? Like, he Otis Redding, he had his own plane. He had his own money. Like, he crashed in his own plane. You know, you, you mm. understand what I'm saying? Like you gotta he, go. he wasn't, he wasn't yeah, on yeah. no commercial flight. Like his own plane went down. Like his money was so long at that time that they, they were, they were projecting him to be like the biggest artist. Do you know who his influence was? Little Richard. That's what he looked up. I mean, a lot of people looked up Little Richard yeah, and shit yeah. back on the Chitlin Circuit back then. Yeah. Cause I actually read a uh, biography about Otis Redding and shit. I mean, it's, he got a real interesting story for you. Said like being your own man type stuff. Yeah. And he was young, man, but that was back in them days where that fucking them them twenties look sixty. Yeah. Man, with the sixties, boy, they was living rough. Yeah. Like we was talking about, shout out to me and Javar was talking about old, uh, uh, like Black Panther type uh, civil rights t- people. Mm-hmm. And Fred, uh, Fred Hampton, he was one of my favorite dudes. He, he got killed when he was 25. Mm. But when you look at him, man, he, he like, like, oh, he's like 40. He look like yeah. 43. Yeah. yeah. Hey, man, this was another fantastic show. First off, man, I want to thank you for coming with a uh, yeah. of knowledge. You know what I'm saying? And I'm going to tell you, man, like, usually I don't openly admit I'm a private person when I can take something from somebody. But I took something from you when you said about just staying consistent. Like sometimes shit ebb and flow and shit. You get a little discouraged and shit, but that's just a testament to how patient.
patience work out. Like you said, this wasn't some overnight thing. It, um, you said you started 13 years ago. Yeah. And even before that, it started with you doing stuff as a kid. And yeah. it um, ended up being this. So, man, I'm, first of all, I want to congratulate you on the success of uh, Old Soul Entertainment. And I hope that um, all the events you get come up with now, uh, present, and future be equally successful and even more. Appreciate so that. I appreciate you for coming uh, up here. Um, anything you want to say to plug or anything? Social media? Uh, yeah, just uh, just follow us. It's at Old Soul ENT. The ENT as an entertainment at Old Soul ENT on social media. Uh, my social media is at Sir Doug, so that's S I R D O U G. And the website's the same thing, OldSoulENT.com. You can find all the information there. Um, we have a little bit for everything your kids, your, you know, the adults. You know, we're just mm. trying to keep the city moving. Is our names at the door for uh, the icon party? <laughs> uh, actually, yeah, I can get y'all. Yeah. I need to be a superstar on the list. <laughs> I mean, with the kind of numbers we're going to be doing, I, I'm all right that night. Going for it. let you let niggas in. It's cool. <laughs> but, uh, you got anything you want to say in closing? Um, dropped the video earlier. Uh, Five dollars worth of clothes for 66 bucks. Make sure you check out the Corey GQ Fresh Fashion Be Late. Uh, drop another video Friday. Uh, as I say, for the show, tell a friend, tell a friend, and just show support. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in to the greatest podcast you never heard of. Shout out to everybody who's listening. Uh, I fired my therapist. Then I hired my therapist. I'm nuts. I'm, 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 I'm fucked up. Anyway, shout out to the shout out to Side ain't going around now. Fuck. Shout out to the side, my motherfucking favorite Where Muslim. Where He's in a distressful situation. Oh, man. But shout out to my homeboy, superstar uh, Javar. This could be the after party. Javar got a fight on uh, Saturday. He fight. Okay. He's a yeah. professional fighter, undefeated. Uh, he's fighting Saturday, twenty third at the um, at the factory over on Crawfordsville Road. Gonna be a fantastic crowd. Four chance promotion uh, promoting it. You should make sure you get out and see that. You can make it a, a night. That is Shug Week. Shug Weekend. I'm having a little cook, cookout good together for my brother. That's an incredible weekend right there. Uh, tune in next week. Uh, we have our special guest, Michael Jackson and Prince. <laughs> uh, Michael Jackson will be uh, climbing out the ground performing Thriller. <laughs> but uh, thanks for everybody tuning in. we see you all next week. Peace. Um, a, a little fun fact. Um, Michael Jackson. I don't wait to after the show. To t- no, book, yeah, I, I should have said on the air. Michael Jackson died. Okay, so here, here it is. So June twenty fifth. June twenty fifth. Yeah. But do you know what the twenty fifth, June twenty fifth, also was? My sister's wedding anniversary. It was. It was the release of Purple Rain. Yeah. So Prince killed him. Wait, but you know what else? You know what else it was? What? You know what else it was? What? It was the twenty fifth anniversary of Purple Rain. Uh, so he's trying to take the shine away from Prince. He hating in the afterlife. That is incredible. Yeah. Is 325, 75, man. 75. Uh, no, it was a little later than that, wasn't it? 08. 08. Let's see. I had, I, it was either 08 or 09. No, it was, it was 09. I had my daughter in 2010. It was either, it was either 08 or 09. Yeah, it was 08. But, but once again, Purple Rain came out on, on the, 20, the 25th, June 25th. 25 years later... On the 25th anniversary, Michael Jackson dies. Damn. That's weird. That's 325, so that's why I always do the party around the 25th. Ah. Oh, that's weird. Yeah. That's, that's, that's some good shit to, you know what I'm saying, find Man, out. I'm glad, I, I'm glad I kept it going, because I'm going to put that motherfucker at the beginning just so I'm like, uh, oh, shit. Oh, you got that yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. I'm glad I kept that motherfucker. I'm going to yeah. put that at the very beginning. All right, you can cut this part out now. Hey, me and my girl, uh, 